let's go ahead and roll through this class, but I might, um, like Ron, um, Kathy, I don't see that you have audio, you might, but Ron, I might ask you guys, you know, to answer some of these questions for me from your perspective, like we were talking about. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, you know, thank you guys for coming to Marketing Boot Camp. I hope you guys had an awesome Memorial Day weekend and it's time to kind of kick off the summer with a little bit more classes. So Marketing Boot Camp teaches ways to leverage an existing working relationship through many different sources. So understand that like marketing is important to every business model, but you never want to spend too much on marketing for your business. So make sure that you pay attention to your expenses and don't wear yourself too thin trying to market um, through all these different sources. I'll also say that this class does a great job of kind of going back to the basics of things. There are a ton of ways nowadays to market your business. A lot of people are, are going digital, you know, through internet and social media, <clears throat> which are great ways. But the avenues that we talk about in this course may also kind of prove to be a little bit more successful when kind of implemented right. So I wanna dive into those. So as stated before, this course teaches four very intentional and proven approaches for creating additional working relationships. So those being yard signs and home ads, just listed or just sold campaigns and also farming. So the workbook that I shared um, in the chat option, I put it in there, you guys probably have it too. It's also on pipeline. Um, they like it makes sure to look at that for resources. They also give a lot of tools in the back that you can take and make your own. Um, so let's just kind of start with farming first because it's a really um, great topic, especially for our area. A lot of agents do a lot of farming. So I have to be honest, when I first started here and I heard the term farming, I'm not gonna lie, I literally thought it had to do with farms. <laughs> So it wasn't until we had our meeting um, a while ago, I think it was about a year ago, where Ann Larson kind of presented her farming process. It kind of clicked, you know, at that time what farming meant. So for new agents in this class, farming is when you kind of pick a location. For Ann, it was her condo complex and you leverage yourself to be top of, like the top of mind agent for that location. So the material here begins with mailings and mailings can generate leads um, through your farming area. However, like I said at the beginning of the class, you know, pay attention to the costs of mailings because, you know, if you're mailing a, a big demographic for a farming area that can get a little pricey sometimes. So just pay attention to your costs, make sure that you're not stretching yourself too thin. But um, what do your mailings kind of look like now? Um, Ron or, or Kathy, since you're in here, um, if you are doing mailings, kind of what do they look like? Well, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start and then I'll look Kathy, but um, again, I, I went through this class probably one of the first times it was presented and it kind of got me kicked off. And then seeing Ann's presentation, it, I just kind of carried off from, from that. But I've got a very specific area that first, First time I sent one out was just identifying or introducing myself to the neighborhood. You know, I live in the neighborhood. I know the neighborhood. I know this part of the lake. I know everything about this part of Osage Beach. And then the second one I sent out, I got all them dock magnets or uh, dock and dine magnets. I sent one out with a, uh, a, a letter and then I signed each one of them individually. And then most recently um, I did a just listed on a listing I've got that's on Dude Ranch Road, which is my farm area. And when I sell it, I'm going to put out a just sold. I uh, sent out a Memorial Day one just a couple weeks ago, just keeping my name and face out there. Um, so my next one hopefully is going to be my sold on this, this villa that's in my farm area and just try to keep in front of them. I just try to do something about once a month, once every six weeks. That's, those are great ideas, Ron. I really like how you said that you did your like magnets and, <clears throat> and um, your personalized signed letters. And that's the whole point too, when you're considering mailing mailings to farmers, like you said, being top of, top of mind and kind of that go-to agent for that particular area. Um, Kathy, can you hear me? I, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah, have you been doing any mailings recently? What have you kind of tried? 
Uh, well, I'm guilty of not doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's a, that's a problem I need to work on. But um, I uh, let other things get in the way and uh, it's always something I'd rather put on the back burner, I think. But um, uh, working my immediate area where I live is something I, I do on occasions, whether with letters or, you know, a, a nice postcard or something. Mm -hmm. But um, the other thing is, is I'm uh, toward the end of the year, I'll send out, I, I, about every other year, I'll buy those calendars, the late calendars. And, um, and I send them out. It's kind of costly to mail those, but I send them out to roughly 100 people and uh, people that have bought from me before or, you know. Mm -hmm. or no, I like that calendar idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 you know, as much as I can hand them out, <laughs> you know, right. it's a lot cheaper. But I mean, by the time you buy it and then you mail it, you know, mm -hmm. it, it really kind of adds up. But because uh, it's, a, it's a larger one. Um, but um, I, I, once in a while, somewhere in between, just list it or or um, you know work in a specific area around the lake uh, condos usually that I'll send out mailings on but uh, I'm it's never been a big thing for me uh, and it should be <laughs> but that is uh, yeah that's that's kind of uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to sit in today and just kind of get myself jazzed up to uh, taking a bigger approach to uh, marketing um, I I love that, Kathy, and I'm glad that you're here. Um, those are really great ideas. I think that, you know, it's okay to not take the mailing aspect of any of these sources and necessarily practice them, you know, all the time, every month, because it, it can be expensive. But as long as you're kind of generating something, you know, occasionally to that area or to your, your designated group, you know, that's, that's half the battle. So, right. um, are you guys utilizing, like, what resource are you utilizing to kind of create what you're mailing? Are you using Design Center more? Or are you using, like, Canva more? Well, for my postcards, um, I use Wise Pelican. It's, you just upload your CSV file, and um, then they give you different templates that you can use, and I just take whatever they have, and I just put my information on there and, and use it. Uh, They've got so many different templates and no sense recreating the wheel. But uh, for some of my uh, Facebook marketing, I, I use, I like Canva. Mm -hmm. I'll make my Facebook covers. Um, when I change them up, I use Canva on that. It's uh, pretty easy to use and it's got a lot of templates as well. Yeah, I love Canva. Canva is a great free resource. Canva. I don't know of that one. What is it? It's, called, it's called Canva. It's C-A-N-V-A dot com. And um, you can, I use Gmail, Kathy. So like I can sign in through my Gmail on Canva and it's free. Um, they do offer like some graphics or, or certain texts or something that costs money, but it will, it'll tell you like which ones cost money and the rest is all free. So you can design anything in Canva and it gives a, a little bit more flexibility, I think, than what Design Center does you're able to create a lot more within Canva. So it is a great resource. And I guess you can use your own uh, photos and stuff like that. Yeah, right? they have options to upload your own images, your own like uh, pictures for backgrounds or even just pictures you can create. Um, they have like over a million templates on that website. I mean, from Facebook posts to wall hangers to coaster, I mean, just anything you can think of. So it's really cool. Right, that's cool. I'll yeah. check it out. Can I, just share, can I just share my screen? I'll show you, Kathy, what, what I've yeah. done most recently. Okay. You want to take yours down, Kayla? Yeah, give me one second. Okay. Nice. And it's easy to use. Um, let me pull it up here. I don't know. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah, that's yep, nice. That's, just mid disappear. But anyway, that's um, yeah, pull it back up again. It was. It took me about ten minutes, and um, you know, I just took pictures from the the listing, put them all together, used some fonts that they've got in there, and uh, that's what I posted on Facebook. That's what I posted um, on all the open house sites and whatnot. But it's really easy to use, and uh, 
like Caleb said, it's free. I pay at, I think I pay, I don't know, $19 a year for the, the premium service, but it's still relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll give it back. Give it back to you, Caleb. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. If I can get my I've created back. a lot of things with just with publisher. I mean, yeah, publisher is another great resource, but sounds like that has more to offer probably. Let me throw mine back up now. There you go. Thanks, Ron. That was awesome to share. That looked like a really great listing ad. And Kathy, you're right. Publisher is another great resource. I'm personally, I've played with Publisher a lot, but I'm not like super, you know, techie with it. Like a lot of people can be, but I can, I've seen some really cool stuff come from Publisher. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's really good, but I'm just not very good at it. I haven't spent enough time getting good at it. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to um, be sure to include this important note from our book. It says the less information the card contains, the more likely it's going to be read. So I would also say that like the more professional or eye catching as well um, and doing postcards and, and like neighborhood update cards keep you at that top of mind spot. Whereas like unsolicited envelopes or just envelopes in general, um, they don't rarely get open. So try to make, you know, postcards or door hangers or, or things like that, that keep the information about you, but doesn't give all the information away because it'll generate more phone calls to you. Um, what are some other things that you could do, like I said, kind of in place of a, of a postcard? You know, I know door hangers is another great option. And Ron, you mentioned magnets, but does it, has anybody tried anything else um, mailing wise or even like drop by wise? And I probably need to do it's some okay if you, if you have it. Um, some uh, other just, just to do a letter. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's more expensive, a little, little more expensive to mail. Actually, it doesn't, I don't think there's that much of a difference. Yeah, I mean, just to even do a just a regular letter. Uh, some people say to handwrite, and that's the way I am, handwrite as much as you can on those. I mean, even if you're doing a, a letter that's going out to the general public, um maybe, you know, write down their first names uh, on there and then sign your name on there or uh, address it yourself, you know, that, that'll at least get them to open, <laughs> you know, it might be more likely to open the mail if they don't see it on a, um, on a label. Right. They don't see their address on the label. But, but um, it's a lot more work though, but you might get better results. You'll get more for your money. That's true. It is, it is a lot more work, but making it a little bit more personalized, like you said, Kathy, being handwritten or even a personalized signature like Ron did, that can mean volumes to people. Yes, I, I totally agree. As, um, it's absolutely necessary in this uh, day and age because so much of it we do electronically um, to put um, to personalize things a little more, I think is important. Mm -hmm. I agree. Our book um, kind of mentions that they follow like an eight and eight touch, um, meaning it's like their short term touch program. So they're like mailing or trying to touch their farming area about once every eight weeks or, or eight days even, just depending on what that definition means to you. So um, I know Ron, you kind of touched that at the beginning, but what like frequency are you guys using? Like, what is your time frame? Um, Kathy, you kind of mentioned, you know, you, you do things as, as you're going throughout your year, but what do you want um, when thinking about, you know, ramping that up? Are you going to do something similar to like an eight and eight or? I don't really have a plan. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of, I, I think if I would space it out, I'm not a, you know, I don't know, I guess, um, I don't want to be on a schedule to get something mailed out the same time every month or every, you know, I might do something at the most every quarter, mm -hmm. I think is my, uh, the frequency I, I kind of had in mind. Uh, well, and that's a good frequency, Kathy. I was just going to say like our book even suggests quarterly too. So okay. even if you're doing it quarterly, that's a good, that's a good program. You can wear people out with stuff that start ignoring. I think, 
I know how I am. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't like a lot of mailings, to be honest with you. I get so many from realtors <laughs> that I feel like, okay, this is overdone. And um, um, it, it it's hard because I know that uh, some are coming from teams. And, um, and so there are different team members that are going to be targeting certain areas, you know, and I get that. But... Um, but I'm just saying, I know that um, I, I just care. And, and maybe because I'm, if I was in the market, I guess maybe, and I wasn't already a realtor, <laughs> maybe I would pay more attention to it. So I'm really not one to gauge it by, but, um, but I just carry them to the trash or recycle rather. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that is um, uh, something I do worry that, you know, I wear, I, I wear people out with too much. Now I'll email regularly mm -hmm. too. I uh, don't always get a lot of responses, but I, uh, some of my regular customers do respond uh, to mm -hmm. being, um, you know, for me to stay in contact with or a text message, you know, but that's pretty much how I've worked it. Right. Um, and, and that's a great point that you're, you're making about responses to you. I mean, sometimes via email or mailings, you know, responses can be heavy or responses can be light, but what I want and try to coach our agents on is even if you're not seeing responses, that's still getting your name out there and you out there. So even if you don't get a response from a mailing or an email, they're still seeing it. Even if they're, you know, like you said, recycling or something, they're still seeing it, which means that it's still a part of their thought process. If something real estate related comes up, they'll probably think about, oh, who is that postcard that I got that one time or anything like that. So don't let yeah. non-responses or minimal responses, you know, scare, scare you away from trying. Sure. And Kaylin, I've got a, a client on the line. I'm going to have to jump off here. Hey, no problem, Ron. Okay, thanks. See you, Ron. Have a good day. See you guys. Thank you. So just getting into um, a couple, uh, this was an example of um, the quarterly farming postcard from our book. And some things that I like to point out here to consider is, you know, having a testimonial on your marketing material, this shows, you know, great value to your business always. Having a summary just brings your value as an expert agent to the area um, that you're farming as well. And then, um, you know, kind of creating an example like this uh, with like your winning personality and making relationships already in the area that you're farming, you know, it can prove to be very successful. So I really like this example. Again, not providing too much information, but showing that, you know, you're, you're a successful agent with those uh, percentages or numbers, whichever ones that you want to incorporate, plus like a little testimonial um, and maybe even something about your strategy. Those, those are all great examples of kind of things to consider when doing a mailing. Sure. <laughs> And then some additional to the, I'm sorry, when you're referring to the book, you, you said, you know, templates from the book, but what, which one, what book are you talking about? Um, if you go to um, our chat on this, uh, this uh, call, if I can bring it up, um, I posted a link in there, Kathy, that has our workbook oh, okay. from Momentum there. And those workbooks are also on our pipeline. So if you just have some spare time, um, and want to generate ideas, there's a lot of great uh, examples that you can pull right out of that book as well. It's under chat? Right. Yeah, if you pull up our chat box. If I do, I, all I see is oh, let me pull it group up. chat, Zoom group chat to everyone. It doesn't give me anything. I can't get mine to pull up. But I'll be sure to send it to you, Kathy, too, after, after this class. Um, some additional things on farming before we get into another marketing avenue. Um, again, I got a lot of inspiration from Ann Larson when I heard her, her presentation a while ago. So um, as well as kind of doing some own research um, the couple times that I've taught this class. But here are kind of some more options that you can try when it comes to farming in the area. Hi, Jane. Um, Hi. So the first one being phone calls, you know, after every mailing or every touch that you've tried, whether, um, you know, you've got responses or not, follow up with a call if you have time or feel comfortable. The material provides like a lot of great dialogue examples that you can turn into like market information, 
um, or providing that market information and turning that into a working relationship. But you can also keep it simple by just asking questions to your farm clientele. Questions could be like, do you know anyone who's interested um, in your neighborhood or interested in um, talking about real estate? Have you got mailings and from me and was your information useful? You know, what other information about, you know, the local neighborhood or condo or wherever you are, you know, would you like to see? Like, would you like other information? So asking a lot of questions like that can prove to be valuable for you as well. So point is, there's always value in a phone call, even if it's just to introduce yourself as kind of that protector um, or information giver of that farming area. <laughs> um, another thing is like meetings. Um, and this is a great thing to consider. I really loved when Ann talked about how she was doing stuff like this, but um, she was talking about with her condo complex, you know, she attended like their quarterly meetings or even their HOA meetings. Um, and then she would bring something kind of a value with her or even just some like food, like donuts or coffee, just anything. So I know Ann had used this example and had meeting, made meetings kind of like a focal point for her to attend. And she got a lot of great feedback from the people who would also attend those meetings. So like I said, just think of something small. If your property or your farm area does something like that, you know, be a resource to those um, attendees if they have, you know, an HSA meeting or something like that. Um, you know, consider an annual theme. I've heard some agents even put together like, um, I don't know, like a Cinco de Mayo type theme day um, or maybe do like an annual get together of some kind. Kind of shows appreciation to that farming area, like the residents there. So I've seen some um, people do that, especially with smaller <laughs> farm markets that they're using, and that's been a really cool um, thing that th that has paid back them for them as well. Um, and you could also partner up with like a local business or service. Consider bringing in like anything local, even if it's just somebody who you know does coffee or donuts, or maybe even a lender. Um, I know Ann said that she would sometimes get lenders or, or somebody from a local business to kind of come to those meetings with her or uh, partner up and just give um, those people some information. I think one time I had an agent talk about how they were, their condo complex was talking about getting their docks like reworked. And so she had somebody from like Ameren come in and somebody that came in that did um, construction on docks and stuff and just kind of explain that process to the residents. And that was really helpful. Um, but you can get creative with that. And then, um, you know, think about making it personal. Like you said, Kathy um, and Ron said to you, when farming, considering building those relationships with your residents, building it more personal and get, get like generally involved with what's going on with them. I know that Ann would say that she would get real close with some of her condo folks and she would just get something small for them every once in a while or just pop in and say hi and see how they were doing or if they needed anything. I know that those agents who are successful with farming like Ann um, would have probably taken COVID as a really great opportunity and um, provide, you know, and check in with their residents. Like, can I get you anything from the store? Do you need hand sanitizer? Just something like that. So. Um, and that particular example, content, like continue to just reach out and, and just talk to them. It doesn't even have to be real estate related. Just how are you, you know, how are you doing in, in the apartment or condo complex, you know, just whatever. Um, and, and that'll keep you top of mind as well. And then finally, don't be afraid to like go digital. Um, this last one I know is getting really popular in the day and age that we live in, but you know, considering digital options can really be valuable. I know that some agents have tried doing like a neighborhood website or even like a neighborhood Facebook group. Um, I know that like in the subdivision I lived in, I would get like a weekly newsletter from like our HOA and just updating me with some fun things. I even had some neighbors like say, oh, we're having like a garage get together or something in the newsletter. And I thought that that was really cool. You could also incorporate Lake like local events, especially in the summertime. Um, so those are just some different different ideas, but social media groups can be, can be huge too. I even um, knew an agent that helped find like a lost pet because of the neighborhood group that he had created. And he got the neighborhood involved through that group and actually found this pet 
and then a year later sold those, the house of the owners of those pet owners. So that was pretty cool. Um, but just get creative and, and be aware of your time and money. You know, Facebook groups don't cost anything. Um, so it's just a great resource to think about. Um, can, do you guys have any ideas that you guys have tried when thinking about um, a particular complex or farming area, maybe outside of these? Uh, no, other than just simple mailings, that's mm -hmm. pretty much all I do. Yeah, no problem. Um, the internet, like I, I Google a lot too. So like you can Google or Pinterest and they have a lot of really great creative ideas also. But let's switch gears and let's uh, talk about like making some calls next. I know every class like that we have does a great job with addressing mindset before having any dialogue. So, you know, we call these beliefs through the momentum program and the ones that are in bold, you know, really apply to this class. But it's so important to kind of get in the right mindset or we call it get, get on the channel um, before you start having dialogue with your clients. So, you know, you want to get prepared, you want to get engaged, you want to be upbeat and positive and you know, you're, you need to like, some people are, I mean, everybody's different, but me personally, like if I'm going to have a class or, or talk to um, fellow agents one-on-one, -on -one, I even have to pump myself up. So, you know, don't be afraid to find whatever, you know, makes that positivity click, click on and, and gives you a lot of energy before you have that dialogue. And then also you kind of want to pay attention to, um, you know, the tone that you get from initially reaching out. If you get somebody on the phone, you know, what tone are they bringing on that phone call? Kind of match that tone, figure out like a different way to um, get them to listen to you by responding, um, on a similar level of volume or, or a similar um, uh, personality way, um, whatever you're picking up on the other end of that phone. Does that make sense? Um, and let's just kind of look at like a typical example of like when someone calls. So this is kind of from a typical agent <laughs> and typical agents think that the only goal for a property call is to provide information. And most do this um, by hoping that the answers are giving the or meeting those clients needs of the caller and they're kind of, you know, disappointed when at the end of the call, they don't get the result that they want. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't want to just be the information givers. <clears throat> we want to be the information seekers. So let's look at like a different example, a better example of how to kind of flow a conversation. So the goal is to um, have an effective property call. It's not only to reveal information, but also to kind of label exactly where that caller is in the home buying process. So therefore, when someone calls, you want to be you know, asking a lot of questions, answer all of their questions by revealing information, um, identify exactly where they are kind of in the buying process, and then you know, close and follow up accordingly. So if someone is calling you for information about a property, chances are good that they're also calling other agents. Thus, the way that you answer the phone and converse with them, you know, is, a, is the opportunity to kind of distinguish yourself from the competition. So when answering the phone, like I said before, sound up, beat and positive, you know, be sincere. Um, you know, when, when they're asking a question, say things like, oh, that's a great question, you know, and, and provide that information as the answer. Um, if a home, you know, kind of meets the first three um, of the caller's needs, move directly to the labeling phrase of, you know, this, how, this home sounds like a great option for you. May I ask how you're going about finding your new home or, or try, to, try to get that appointment. Um, keep providing the caller with information and re-engaging until you hear a no, basically. So, um, once you kind of hear a no to, you kind of want to switch roles from that information giver to asking the caller, labeling the caller, you know, are you currently in the market for a new home and see kind of where they are in that process. So. Well, so. sometimes if you are under the impression that somebody is just calling to get information, um, maybe they're already working with an agent you know, you, I may come right out and ask them, are you engaged with 
uh, a real estate agent at this time? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, either the answer will be, well, kind of, not really, you know, or, you know, where they can just continue to get more information if they, if they want it or need it. But, um, but a lot of times they say no, and, and you can decide whether or not it's worth your time to continue to, you know, offer mm -hmm. um, assistance. And, um, and that's kind of important, too, is to know that first, you know. I, Somebody say, oh, yeah, I've been working with Anne for three years now, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but that, uh, that's kind of important to kind of, at some point, find an opportunity to, uh, to say, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I just like to know, are you already working with an agent? Were you just interested in information today? Or can I assist you further? So that, uh, something like that. Yeah, no, I completely agree, Kathy. And uh, and you were hitting on one of the, these on the screen. You know, Looker is kind of working with another agent. Asking that ahead of time, like you said, you know, it, it gets you to understand if they are or are not. And then also, you know, being able to say things, well, okay, if you are working with another agent, did you sign anything? Um, and, and asking questions about maybe the process that that other agent, you know, provided to see if you can fill the gaps and, and provide a little bit more value if they hadn't, you know, signed anything. But if they did, you know, you kind of have to respect that and, and refer them to talk to their agent. But I absolutely agree with you, Kathy. Those are all awesome points. Um, you know, what do you, what do you think about when um, you get a call, Kathy? Uh, about one of your properties, you know, and the caller is ready to buy, but maybe not, you know, maybe hasn't talked to an agent or, or have a process yet. You know, how are you going about having that conversation um, when they call? Um, I'm not sure what having the information. Yeah, I'm talking about like when you're, um, you know, working and then you just get like, a phone call um, from a lead on on a sign that you have uh, like on on sure. one of your listing properties, mm -hmm. and that and that they they are kind of ready to ready to go. How are you kind of setting that appointment up? Well, you know, you'd basically interview them uh, to find out where how far along they are in the process. Have you um, you know are you looking for a second home? Are you look for a primary home. Um, you know, if he's calling about a condo, is condo what you want? Or do you have other interests? Uh, you know, act like you genuinely care. And you do. You mm -hmm. care about what they need. And then basically try to get them an appointment uh, to go see the property if it sounds like what they mm -hmm. uh, would work for them. You know, say, well, I don't want to waste your time showing you something that you don't want or need. Um, you know, give me an idea of what you are looking for. And then from there, you can generally get into, hey, let me email you a few ideas or, you know, <laughs> you know, there's just different ways to handle it. Or if they're in a hurry, they're here on a short period of time, they may just want to meet with you immediately. Mm -hmm. So, No, I, I love that, Kathy. I like how you said, um, you know, to be eager and to show that you're helpful. Those are like the two biggest things right there, you know, proving that you're, you're willing and able, but also just, you know, kind of being a little bit more upbeat and eager to help them. Right. Um, what do you say when um, somebody, when you get that phone call again, as that example, and they're just like, well, can't you just email it to me instead of meeting me in person? How do I handle? Mm -hmm. Oh, if they just want me to email it to them? Yeah, instead of actually um, like- Oh, that, that's that perfectly up. fine. Then they have my contact information and, um, and you know, I, I feel like, well, you know, if they're only wanting the information, generally it means they're already either working with somebody or not a real serious buyer yet. Mm -hmm. Or they feel like they only want to talk to the listing agents. Some people feel that way. Mm -hmm. you know, that they would prefer to talk to the listing agents because they feel like they may be able to negotiate a little better deal, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they're different, you know, people have all different ideas on how they want, you mm -hmm. know, what they want. In a, well, I'm assuming that, like, if you do send that email, because obviously you do want to provide them that information if they are dead set on that, that you're probably following up with them 
pretty mm -hmm. frequently after that if they are um, continuing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely follow up with phone call. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. That's great. Um, and then just to kind of talk about the last one, you know, when you have that listing and they're calling you, but the caller is not like ready to buy or may not be a buyer yet, what are you kind of saying to them? Again, you know, you're identifying that you know, going through that initial conversation, but what are you trying to do if, if you realize that they may not be ready yet? Um, well, you know, just, I guess, show some understanding and just say, you know, a lot of people want to start looking in advance. You know, I'd be perfectly willing to put you on a mailing to where you'll get these properties that come available. Um, you know, we can just stay in touch. If you ever have any questions, additional questions about it, you know, just let me know. I can send you maps. I'd be happy to send you a map of the lake, you know. Oh, I love offer, that idea. Yeah, oh, offer yeah. to send them information that will help them if they're not from the immediate. It all depends on, you know, some mm -hmm. people are very familiar with the area already, but some are not. So mm -hmm. I've got people from the Vegas area <laughs> and they're looking for uh property in Missouri, but they haven't really decided where they want to be yet. So I've been working with them for a while. But, um, but that's, um, you know, one of those things that you just kind of have to wait out. You know? Do you ever try to, um, when you're having that conversation, Kathy, do you ever, you know, ask them, which I'm sure you do ask them, you know, kind of what their time frame is, since they oh, yeah. are looking? It's generally those that are looking at retirement within a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, those yeah, that makes sense. That yeah no those are all great responses i thank you so much for putting that input in um let's kind of look at like and talk about some home ads or maybe a direct response marketing um again the material that's given in our workbook you know they talk about great ideas um, and i kind of put them on the slide here and it's just examples you can take it and make it however you want like we were talking about in canva kathy you can make the same thing if you wanted in canva and make it really pop with background pictures and stuff so you know where are you kind of running your ads now um you know what do those kind of look or sound like and i'm talking about the ones kind of on the screen as far as you know homes under a certain price range maybe first time buyers are you doing anything like that uh, targeting, um, are you saying doing mailings to target specific? Um, that not necessarily buyers? mailings, although you can send these um, as mailings too, but it could be simple as, you know, a Facebook post even um, for oh. first time home sellers or buyers, or maybe you have a right. fixer upper, just any ad. I have not uh, done much in the way of targeting um, mm -hmm. specific types of. Uh, buyers and sellers, I, I guess, um, you know, I, I, it's more generalized, mm -hmm. you know, so this is what our area is like, and, you know, this is what my background is, and, you know. Right. Well, it may be something um, <laughs> that, you know, to consider going forward, especially if you're um, a relatively new agent, too, making like Facebook ads. And I use, I use them on, like I say Facebook, but again, you can mail these, you can make them into magnets even. You can do anything that you can get creative about. But um, I see a lot of these mainly on Facebook or within Facebook groups and, and mm -hmm. you know, shrinking down that, that viewer um, demographic with something like first time home buyers or homes under a certain price range or something can generate some leads for you. Um, Jane, I don't know if you can hear me, but do you, does your team do anything with kind of some direct response marketing with like your Facebook posts or, or anything? Do you kind of seg like segregate or narrow down like a certain demographic every once in a while? Yeah, I don't know if she can hear me. She may have stepped away. Yeah, no problem. Um, just know that those are examples though. And the next picture beside those ads is just um, a tracking sheet that kind of our workbook, workbook provided. Um, so you can kind of track your calls or maybe even use it to track your ads um, that, you, that you've done. So <clears throat> the material mentions, you know, the power 
at that time of um, Craigslist. It, it brings up Craigslist, but as a place to kind of post these ads too. Um, like I said, Facebook is another great uh, place for that. Um, I've seen some even in the lakejob.com under those. Um, and there's a ton of like real estate local real estate groups or even um, groups for uh, people looking to rent or whatever, where I see a lot of those targeting ads too. So utilize that and, and do some research on what platforms you, you wanna put those on, but those are usually the ones that I see the most of. Um, so what about your guys' signs? Like when you stick a sign in a yard, um, what are you doing when you get a phone call from your sign? Are you using anything to like track those um, while you're taking that phone call? Um, no, well, yeah, you just keep record of the phone calls. I mean, try to get as much information from them as you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in touch with some people that call from the signs for years. You know, they just like to, they like to check in every once in a while. I think it's kind of, um, Possibly, I mean, things happen in people's lives, you know, that they may have interest, strong interests when they're here on vacation and then they go home and, you know, one lady got breast cancer, you know, didn't hear from them in a long time and they called me one day and, you know, she explained to me what was going on, sorry, we haven't been in touch, you know, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. um, it, it, even because I had, re I'd be trying to reach out to them, you know, and see right. how they and not hear back for a while but anyway uh, I mean that's things change for people you know in the process so no I love that have you guys um or did you hear over the weekend I personally didn't catch any of it but are you guys excited for that new summer ad campaign that um we have kind of talked about this past week I think it was supposed to air this over the weekend and, and continue on through so that hopefully should provide um, some some phone calls, some lead generation through that as well, because we made them, you know, along with the what this had suggested, you know, targeting to certain demographics and things. So those should, I mean, are you excited about about that? Well, it certainly sounds exciting. Yes. I mm -hmm. hope it I hope it works. I do too. Should. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at um, the just listed or just sold methods. Um, to this as well. The, and again, you know, lots of great examples for just listed and just sold marketing through door knocking and even phone calls. What I love about visiting local neighbors and making the calls um, is the phrase that they utilize on these slides is, you know, as an extra service to my clients or as an extra service to the Smiths, you know, whoever those Hello, clients are. Hello, this is Kathy. And um, this is showing to others in the area that you are going above and beyond and again, being creative. So, you know, leave like a flyer on the door or a hanger on, on the door um, if no one answers. You may never know if they have someone in their life that may be interested. So don't be afraid to um, leave valuable or information or something eye-catching um, as you're doing door knocking or even phone calls. Um, the other great thing about this idea is the, oh, um, and by the way, statement that they use. Um, meaning that, oh, and by the way, I listed this house for whatever amount. Um, the reason why this is a, is a good statement and I love it out of the book is because people don't know what they don't know. So, and oh, by the way, usually equals to a lead generation phrase of some kind. So by saying the listing price, um, they may be surprised by the market and want to utilize you as a consultant because they didn't know that they could sell their home for 350,000 as an example, because they thought it would only sell for 200,000. So that, that bump in price range or just mentioning that price range can really prove to be valuable as well. Um, so also just switching to the sold dialogue, it's very similar, um, uh, you know, with those same statements, the, um, it gives you the opportunity to communicate and look for potential buyers for the area, as well as again, provide that value with um, the price because the surrounding neighbors may not know about the market. So, you know, um, 
another great idea that I've seen some agents do with farming and utilizing this dialogue um, or processes with um, a farm, like they introduce this to the new owners or to everyone through the digital avenue as well. So that could be a newsletter or like I said, a group or something. So being able to have a social media group or a digital newsletter or something and being able to say, oh, the Smiths just sold their property for 350,000 can get that just sold dialogue or just listed dialogue out there to that farming demographic as well. So they work kind of in conjunction together. Um, sorry, Kathy, I think I messed you up. So, so Jane, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah. Um, Jane, do you, do you agree with kind of that just listing and just sold and being able to, to incorporate it in those other avenues like farming, for example? Uh, I am so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> no, that's okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I was just talking about um, kind of that just sold dialogue or just listed dialogue when you're communicating with the with the local area um, or maybe your farming demographic, being able to say powerful phrases like, oh, and by the way, I, I just listed Mr. Smith's home for, you know, 350000 because they didn't know that that would be their market range right now. Um, or saying things like, as an extra service to the Smiths, I'm going around it and meeting everybody in the neighborhood and introducing myself. Has your team seen, you know, value in kind of similar <laughs> dialogues? You know, I will tell you that um, uh, they they have done that. I mean, I I can tell you I did it 30 some years ago. So, and it was mm -hmm. definitely beneficial. I felt kind of foolish doing it and people did kind of look at you funny, but they did keep your card and they hung on to it. And eventually you did, you would potentially hear back from them. So um, I'd say if, if you're, especially if you're up and coming and getting started, uh, door knocking is a great way to, to get started and just pick your back that many years ago you picked a neighborhood that had blacktop roads so mm -hmm. you know but so pick the neighborhood that you like and that you see maybe some turnover or that's price a, a you know in that sweet spot mm -hmm. and go for it take something of value with you whether it's just a market report for area i or area mm -hmm. k or whatever it is but um, have you, has your team um, members or even you, have you guys done anything really creative um, with like door knocking flyers or, or hangers or, or even like farming? You know, honestly, I would have to say not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'd be, I'd be crazy to uh, think that it's not worthwhile, but you know, the time to do your door knocking is probably on weekends and the mm -hmm. time that you're typically tied up with buyers is on weekends. So there's only so many hours in the day, but it, it would be smart to have a, a door hanger uh, to leave. I mean, it could be something as simple as a, a pen or a, you know, mm -hmm. pen and a sticky notepad, or if you've got any, you know, if you've made up any magnetic flyers or, or a magnetic, what do you call those things? that you put on your refrigerator. Yeah, like anything. a business card or something. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Anything like that is going to just help you stand out. But I think the consistency is going to be um, imperative. I think if you're going to pick a neighborhood, uh, go, go back to the neighborhood every month. You know, don't just think that you're going to do it one time. You need to go back, you know, probably starting hit it March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, you know, I, and then I think you need to pick it up the following year too. It's just, you're not gonna, you're not gonna reap the benefits right away. It's a very long process. Well, I like how you said that, Jane, you know, consistency is a thing with all of our processes and systems, but especially when it comes to marketing, it does take some time, especially with farming or mailings or, or those door hangers, like you were saying, to really build that and be that top, like you have to, you have to start from the bottom and kind of work your way up to that top of mind sector. So that, those are all really great ideas. Um, 
Again, uh, these are just a couple different examples in the workbook. At the end of the book, it gives you some trackers that you or your team members can try. Be sure to track your expenses to however you're comfortable doing that. Your touches, um, it's all going to give you a better idea of where your time is going and also your business, what's working, what's not working. And um, over the, like Jane was saying, over the course of consistent time, you'll be able to identify, um, you know, maybe mailings aren't the best way, but your door hangers are. Maybe your Facebook group's exploding, but none of your mailings are, so we're just going to cancel mailings. So being able to track those over time is super important. Um, let's look at some other things you can do. Again, I'm all about action items. Um, so if you guys are trying to vamp up your marketing game and go back to some of these basics of, that the class provides or even digital, you know, develop a farm plan and, and share it with me. Some, share me with me some of your farming ideas. You can call me and practice the dialogue. You can show me your digital marketing ideas or maybe a group that you created. Um, you know, let me know even what calls you get through the week. Like if you get some people calling on a particular property you have, just let me know that like one of your properties is hot and you're handling those phone calls well. Um, and you can also share with me just your tracking sheet. So um, I put my email on this slide. And then also if you love this class, drop me a testimonial as well. It can be just a quick video text that, that you got some great ideas or even an email. So no pressure, but they're always appreciated. Do you guys have any questions for me? No, yeah. I think it's good. I think, uh, you know, you've offered some great ideas and uh, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you think of anything, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to help. All right, Caitlin, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys for attending and I'll see you guys soon. All righty.